as a business owner, there's so many mistakes that I made just starting out that I wish I could go back in time and just redo it. But they were learning experiences and I'm not the only one. There's also other business owners out there that all made just dumb mistakes and wish they can redo it as well. So what I decided to do was just go and uh, scour the internet and see what other business owners were saying that they would do over. So by the end of this video, you will have eight tips that can make you be a better entrepreneur and hopefully help you uh, pr or prevent you from making the same mistakes we made as well. focus on topics related to the West African community, specifically pertaining to business and personal development. If you want to join a tribe, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, remember to click the bell so that you get alerted when new videos drop. So what I want to talk to you about today are really some tips that you can implement in your own journey of being an entrepreneur on how to be successful right out the gate, just nuances of doing business, and uh, just other information that's not really talked in books. So we're gonna get right into it now. All right, so after scourging the internet and finding some interesting uh, complaints and regrets, uh, I came across eight that seemed very good, very practical, legit and I can't even say from my point of view this is this is how I feel and these are things I would do differently so uh, heed these words and use it to change your life wherever stage you are in in your own business in your own journey so the number one is uh, they said charge a fee from day one free users and customers provide terrible distracting feedback I remember when I first started my business and I was starting to get on the roll and I had friends that they would uh, want to use my services as practice. And, you know, they're my friends are cool, but I, I did like two of them. I was like, yeah, I am practicing it. After, after about the fourth one, when it was asking for these kind of inspections, I said, you know what, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to get some money on this. Like, don't, don't cheat me. And this is something I've noticed a lot when it just comes to black community, African community, when, it, when it's us doing the business, it's all about discounts. Everyone is always asking for a discount. Help me out. Free merchandise, free stuff, free services. It's always the same. It's happened to me and it's unfortunate because it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it's not supporting. You're not supporting the business. So that's one thing I can definitely stand by. Charge a fee when you first start. Be firm on that. Do not give away your services for free. If you need to discount, maybe a close friend, family, fine, but don't do it for free. You are you have value and you're offering that value at a very fair price, so don't do it for free. The next one, number two, pay up, invest. Even when cash is tight, paying an extra 20,000 a year or more for a resource that is two time, two to five times better is the best investment you will ever make. That's, this is so, Definitely something I, I stand by. I haven't really had to deal with a, situa a situation like this, but I know for other businesses, always going for the cheap route and, and, and you know trying to save money, penny pension when you have a business, it's not gonna it's it's not gonna help you grow. Invest in your business, invest in yourself, so that you can get to new levels, new heights. Despise the word free. One of the laws in uh, the 48 laws of power. Is, uh, power is despise the free lunch and there's a reason no one anything free free is not valuable or the stuff that is I'm not even gonna get into that but you don't want to always be looking for free you, you want you don't want to get the cheapest thing when you're in business because at the end of the day it's about providing quality service or products to your customer that that offers them value if you're not investing in, in your business you're not gonna you're not gonna be that option for them that offers the best value. So invest, pay the money, write it off as a, a tax incentive, 
but get it so that your business is competitive and you can continue to grow and you're not gonna have any issues that way. Number three, charge more. Your product either has value or doesn't. Charging 20 to 50 to 100% more than you planned will help you learn that faster and get to a, vi a viable business faster. Don't charge less to get the ball rolling. That only helps with commodities. This is something that I've experienced myself. When you first come into the industry, I was thinking, okay, you wanna be the cheapest thing so you can get customers easy, the ones that are always looking out for price. It doesn't work that well because what will happen is when you do give that product or give that service for that cheap, that really low price, you're not gonna feel good about it because you're just like, well, damn, I know I'm offering value and I just gave them this cheap price and it's not even a promotion, it's just like my bare level. You're just gonna feel like, eh, it's gonna mess with you. So start off, if you if you offer that value and you already looked, did the, the market analysis, put your price where it's competitive or right under the average. If you still wanna, because you're new, you're trying to get into the market, do that. But don't just go, it's, it's a saying that is a race towards the bottom. That never helps. There's always gonna be someone that's cheaper than you that can, you know, give out the products and services and then you end up not having the, not generating the, the wealth or the income that you want because you're always decreasing your value. So don't do that. Uh, definitely charge more. And I had to do it for myself. When I first started, I had the low rates. And I was like, wait, wait a minute. Now, I know I offer a good service. You know, I got some customers, I got some reviews on Google. Let me up the rates and people were paying it because I give good, good value. So always focus on the value. Number four, get better mentors and pay them. A uh, social mentor or advisor is in the, in the end a waste of time, but one or two folks that can truly help you think through the tough decision, they are worth their weight in gold. And if you don't pay them, they really aren't on the hook. So this is something I, I'm doing right now where I just got a mentor off a score. If you never heard of it, look it up. It's a free mentor program by the, the SBA and they provide mentors for free. Any industry that you want, you just search, put in your industry, and then you'll have thousands of mentors for free. And that's what I did. First time I ever had a mentor, the first uh, consultation or the first conversation we had, I just learned so much and I also learned how much I don't know. Very beneficial. I eventually do want to get to the point where I have consultants or mentors or coaches that I'm actually paying in order to get to where I need to get to. I have already said to myself that I must pay for, I need to pay to achieve the, the, the lengths that I want to go to. I can't get everything for free. I understand that if I pay for something that I find valuable and I invest in that way, it's gonna come back to me a hundredfold. And I've seen it happen in my life. I'm advising you all, pay for good mentorship, leadership, or coaching. It's worth it. Number five, work on the business. As a small business, it is critical, important, crit critically important to understand the difference between working on your business and working in your business. Business owners that don't know how to let go of the day-to-day -day operations will hit max capacity. Being the visionary and the executionary in a business is hard work and it takes a full-time effort. Every time you find yourself handling an operations task, you need to stop, delegate the task, and get back to your job, which needs to be growing your business. So I couldn't definitely stand by this. Delegate, delegate, delegate. You shouldn't be doing everything on your own. You should be looking, your role as the CEO of the business is to look for more pastures to dominate, to, to, to get. You shouldn't be doing the day-to-day -day operations. No, that's not your job. You hire people out to do that. That's what you need to be thinking about in your, in your head. You shouldn't be doing everything. That's not a business. It's a job that you created for yourself. No, your focus is you're looking for other opportunities to grow the business and expand so that you can live the life that you really want to live where people are doing the work and you make money when you're going to sleep. Number six, accurate bookkeeping from day one. There is no doubt you can handle your small business bookkeeping yourself, but you need a professional CPA or bookkeeper to help set you and set set up and monitor the proper system. It is much easier to create the correct book, bookkeeping system from scratch than it is to clean up a bookkeeping system that is a mess. 
You should understand your small business financial reporting enough to know when something doesn't look right. Really big, uh, really important. Know your numbers and understand that, hey, if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your projections, money is missing here. You were expecting a certain cash flow. You're getting surprised when, when you see your bank accounts. You're doing something wrong. You should always know how your financial status is. Now, I know it's an emotional thing. It can trigger people even to look at their own personal bank accounts. It happens to me too. But you got to just train, train yourself to always know what your financials are looking like. It doesn't benefit you if, you, if you if you're not diligent in this part as far as making sure that you understand what's going on, uh, the financial health of your business. Number seven, exit plan. Most small businesses do develop a financial plan, but very few consider to develop an exit plan. Without an exit plan for your business, how do you know when to get out? Better yet, how do you know how to properly exit? Most small business owners just assume they will sell their business and that they will find a buyer. However, most small businesses do not define when they will sell their business, exactly how they would do it and to whom. Much like a budget and forecast, uh, your exit plan will change over time, but it is an important piece to put into your overall business plan. Yes, you gotta know know your exit strategy because you're not gonna be working in this business forever. Eventually, you wanna transition. Yeah, either you want to retire or you know you die or something what what is going to happen to that business if you if you start with the end in mind then you will structure the business in a way that if you do want to exercise that option to sell you can sell because you set it up correctly that's how you want to do it so you're thinking of the end in mind you're, you're reverse engineering a multi-million dollar business that can sell so if you start with that end in mind there's certain things you're going to do differently especially when it comes to bookkeeping and your financial records. And the last one, number eight, immediately start building relationship with influencers. One of the best ways to get noticed fast is by building relationships with your influencers in your industry. In the times of social media, this has become easier than ever. Follow them on Twitter, comment on their blogs, invest in some of their one-on-one -on -one programs, mention them in your blogs, etc. cetera. They're endless ways of getting to know influencers in your field. One thing I will say is if you're going to be a business owner, you can't be an introvert. You got to go out there. You got to meet people because these people know people and then they can spread the word out about what you do, who you're about. You you want to be known as the expert in your field. You want to disrupt it. You want to put your name out there and just say, hey, look, this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to build relationships with, with so many people. People will respect that. When you come and you're about your business and you're serious and, and you're generally trying to know people, people can notice when you're being genuine and they're going to respect that. And they, instead of just them being potential customers, they will turn into your fans. So you want to make sure that you're going out there making connections either on IG or even going on meetup.com when you go out to these social events, connect with people naturally. And then naturally, people want to know, okay, who are you about? You're something unique about you. You're special. And you, you could get into what you do with your business, but you do. You definitely want to build connections, um, especially in your industry. Follow these people on social media. I do it. I started really started doing it heavy this year, and you know, just commenting if they go on live, comment on their live. It's it's amazing how how many the feedback you get when you just show that you care about what they're putting out because people put out content they're hoping that people will like it you be that person that likes it consistently and they're always going to remember you and they're going to want to uh, recommend you so uh just a, a reminder or just some tips that you you also want to focus on your personal life because your personal life and your business life they're not separate they're they're all together when you're an entrepreneur and you're going in it you got your business time and then you got your personal time. Remember to, to um, really understand who you are as a person. You want to know, uh, really understand your strengths and weaknesses. This is where therapy or coaching can really help you with that and, and really bring out where you strong, where your your strong points are at, and where your weak points at, so that you understand when it comes to your strength, what you start to learn what complements your strength or your skills. You want to know what complements your skills so that you can make appropriate decisions as far as moving forward. And then as far as weaknesses, you want to know what your weaknesses are so that you can fix them. So if you're not aware of your weaknesses, then you, it's like dead weight that you're not aware of. And it just slows you down. It takes more time. Time is precious. I said this so many times in, in my other videos. 
you want to maximize your time. You want to preserve that time. The money you can always replenish, the time you cannot. So understand what your weaknesses are so that you don't get held down by some dead weight because you didn't want to take the time to understand what your weaknesses are. We all have them and you know it's just something that we all have to deal with as 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 human so uh if you if you do if you do all this stuff and you, you work on yourself as far as you know taking the tips the eight tips and understanding your strengths and weaknesses then you're in a position to add tremendous value to your customers in the future because you took the time to consciously know who you are who you're wh wh what your business is about and with that information the customer is going to recognize that and you're in a position as a small business to say, you know what, what's African, African, whatever. You're in a position to say, you know what, I got these other businesses uh, around me. They're not thinking like me. I'm thinking at a much higher level. I'm going to dominate this industry. How can this channel help you? Three ways. Number one, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also click the bell so that you can be alerted when new videos drop. Number two, check out the pinned comment down below so you can see links to books and other resources that has helped me be more strategic in my thinking. And number three, follow me on my IG so that you can see the events that I go to and just the, the people that I interact with on a daily basis.